Good day. This is an interview with the author Mari Skiepers about the book Striking Inside Angola with 32 Battalion. Please set the scene for the writing of this book. Good day to you as well. Yes, after the completion of the First World War, we were faced with a scenario during the Cold War where the East and the West was divided. On the West we had America, Britain and Europe, and the East, the Soviet Union with its allies. And during this period, which lasted for a few decades, there were several large conflicts uh, internationally. One are reminded of the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the war in Afghanistan, and most important, the war that raged in southern Angola. Uh, during this period, 1966 to 1988, several forces were engaged. Uh, the Soviet Union with its allies Cuba and the Angolan FAPLA force were raging a war against South Africa, the South West African uh, aerial force, uh, and UNITA, uh, which was backed by the United States. And this set the scene of fearsome battles and numerous operations that were conducted uh, inside uh, Angola. And this part of history is very important and I share a bit of what happened during this war uh, in this book, Striking Inside Angola, Free to Battalion. Many authors have written about the Angolan Bush War. Why was it necessary to write this book at this point in time? Yes, uh, as author, I was involved in this conflict. Uh, I served with the elite Free to Battalion, and we uh, were facing the enemy at very close quarters. Um, much of the action took place uh, deep inside Angola, sometimes be behind enemy lines. Um, so I had personal experiences which I share in the book with the reader, but I think the, the, the emphasis is placed on the bigger picture. Uh, and as a soldier, a officer at that point in time, I wasn't really privy to exactly what was happening. So it intrigued me a lot and I started doing a lot of research with the years to come. Um, roughly two, three years ago, the new PIA, or the Access to Information Act, was promulgated, which opened up all the sources. So all the secret C and the secret documents were suddenly available and could be declassified on one's request. Um, I was able to, to go through many records, uh, thousands of documents, and because of my background and my experience, I could uh, find certain information and verify this information from these source documents. So suddenly a whole new world opened up. So this book is very much based on research, on original material. What was the author's involvement in these events described in this book? This book deals with events that led to the major operation of Skari that took place at the end of 1983. So the reader is taking inside this operation. They, are, they accompany through the battalion, doing its maneuvers, attacking enemy bases, but also with the planning of these operations, what went wrong, how did things go right, and the results of these operations. The secrecy of silence is now broken with in-depth, detailed accounts of what happened during this, these operations. Obviously, to complete the picture, the book describes the duration of a war, the major events that took place, when significant incidents took place like the mirage is shot down or some significant uh, incident took place, it's accounted in 
inside the book. And then to complete the picture, the significance of the warfare around Kutu Carnival at the end of 1988 is dealt with and opinion is raised on what exactly happened during that incident. Why should the reader buy this book? Striking Inside Angola Free to Battalion uh, contains a lot of information. Uh, I've included eight complete maps of operations. There are approximately 145 original photographs, many of which, which have never been published before. Photographs which I myself have taken and which are included in the book. Photographs of these bases which Fritu Battalion erected inside Angola, which probably never been uh, shown before. But I also include a bit of technical data about how the signal and the communications was done in, in that era. It's a time before the cell phone and the GSM systems. I also include quite an extensive information about the armament, the weapons, which were used on both sides. So there is comparison drawn to assist the reader to understand how the two sides match up against each other. Operational SCORI is dealt with in detail. I provide daily accounts of movement of our own forces. More than 5,000 South African soldiers participated during this operation. It was a major operation where four different brigades situated in four different areas were encountered by the defence force, uh, where at least two targets were totally eliminated. Uh, Fritu Battalion also played a major role during this operation. No single book that was published managed to cover the whole duration of a war. Because of the length of this war and the numerous incidents and forces involved in this war, it sometimes becomes quite difficult to form a picture of exactly what happened during the Angola Bush War. Um, I myself were interested in a certain part of this war. Obviously this war can be separated in various phases. Um, the phase during 1992-1993, according to my research, was probably the time that the South African Defence Force made its most advances. It had almost free reign in the southern part of Angola and numerous battles and conflicts took place. Of significance is the Operation Ascari that took place at the end of 1983. According to my research, this is most probably the second largest operation conducted during the Ogalan Bush War. Obviously, the fighting around Kutu Carnaval at the end of the war being the most important. But turning back to Operation Askari, um, this was significant. Over 5,000 Defence Force members participated during this operation uh, with a huge armament. The first time the Defence Force engaged with the notorious T-54-55 Soviet Union tank and it changed the scene and the way warfare would be fought uh, during the next few years. So this incident took place more than 30 years ago and now with access to all these sources we were able to put together and understand exactly what happened in the time that preceded Operation Ascari and during Operation Ascari. So Operation Ascari is properly dealt with in terms of this book. 
How does this book address these events? Uh, me as the author of this book was present uh, during a large period in 1983 during this conflict in, in Angola. So I had first-hand experience of what happened. I was privy when operation commanders made major decisions. I bear witness to how this whole war and the operations unfolded. The Why should the reader buy this book? Striking inside Angola Free to Battalion uh, contains a lot of information. Uh, I've included eight complete maps of operations. There are approximately 145 original photographs, many of which, which have never been published before. But I also include a bit of technical data about how the signal and the communications was done in, in that era. I also include quite an extensive information about the armament, the weapons, which were used on both sides with technical specifications. Um, Operational SCORI is dealt with in detail. I provide daily accounts of movement of our own forces. More than 5,000 South African soldiers participated during this operation. It was a major operation where four different brigades situated in four different areas were encountered by the defense force, uh, where at least two targets were totally eliminated. Uh, Free to Battalion also played a major role during this operation. Where is this book available? Striking Inside Nagalo, a Free to Battalion can be obtained from all major bookstores in South Africa, as well as at kalahari.com. Internationally, if you do a search on the title Striking Inside a Girl of a Free to Battalion, you probably get across all the major distribution houses and websites, which you'll find will market this book. Who would you recommend should read this book? The international audience and readers of this book will probably consist of people that have a major interest in conflict. This, is, this book is non-fiction. It's the hard reality of what happened during this war. Major decisions, secrets are, ex are shared. So probably historians, people with interest of history, or people that have a keen interest in warfare. Even the youth that have an interest in the computer games with the combat and warfare will probably be able to access the real stuff from this book. The South African audience, I've mentioned that more than 600,000 South African and South West African Namibian uh, citizens at some stage participated during this war. So every family that somehow were connected to this war will have an interest to get a copy. Um, even school kids that have an interest in history and probably want to know more what their dads or their uncles were exposed to would probably like to read more. After reading this book, you'll probably be able to form an opinion and a good opinion on what exactly happened in the war, the bush war in Angola.